In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a box plot chart. And you can see here, a box plot chart is quite different than any other chart so far I've seen because it has a lot of data. It has here these max whiskers, bottom whiskers, the uh, quartile, and they have here the other quartile on top and bottom, and then of course the medium and the mean. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers' question, which is how to create a box plot chart in Chart.js. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to create a multi-level pie chart and donut chart in Chart.js. And here, if we scroll down, you can see this question came from Comrade. So a special thank you to Comrade for asking the question, and this is what Comrade asked. Hey, I'm from Russia. Thank you for your video. I'm currently doing my project with Chart.js. I use chart type box plot but i can't make a video about box plot thank you all right so let's start to look at this because box plot has a lot of different topic of uh, different values in there and to be honest i am not very familiar with the structure of box plot however i will show you exactly how you can make one and then from there on you can just look at the values what these values mean because it's probably more a scientific topic all right so to do this, first of all, we're going to go to chartjs3.com, getting started, and get the default code. To get the default code, you might notice this here, for some reason, Google Chrome gives me this error. Anyway, just copy all of this code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video in the screen. And then once we did this, I'm going to cut out this here and paste that. Save that, and refresh. All right, so now we have a bar chart. So what I want to do now is to convert it into a box plot type. So to do this, we need to get the box plot type plugin. So it's very important. If you will go to CDN, don't use this one here. You will might see this one here, but this is an important part. This one is not working. And the reason why it doesn't work, it is from data vision, I guess, or something like that. Anyway, this doesn't work anymore because it has not been updated anymore even though it will say here version 4 doesn't accept doesn't work anymore you need a different version so what we need here is the following version we're going to grab this one here and specifically this is what you will be needing as Gretzel that is the developer who basically forked the one from data vision and then made it uh, applicable for chart.js3 very important here make sure you grab this one here so i'm just going to grab this version here and what i will do here is i'm just going to type in here a script code now you can say here uh, source equals that and then what i want you to do as well of course again in this type indicating that this is javascript file all right so once we have this here closing script tag and there we are and if we save this here, refresh, of course nothing happens yet. We didn't activate it or anything yet. We didn't select the type. So if we're going to grab here now and we say here the box plot type, it should do something, but of course it will not work at all because we have not the right structure of the data. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you very simple here, a few items that I've seen and this is, uh, this is what I do not know. I don't understand these numbers basically, although I did some research on what they mean and what they are. So let's start to, to work with that. All right. So we have these colors here. I want to just make sure that this is just only a single color because it's just only one data set here. And then what we're going to do here in this data set, what I'm going to put in here is some additional values. I'm going to put in enter and then I'm going to say here, outlier color so in this case this is a specific color that should pinpoint something what exactly to be honest was not clear and there's not really a real documentation of this the previous documentation has been disappeared and then I guess they're updating this trying to get it up to speed to make it work again so that's why this probably not yet a documentation I do expect a documentation in the near future next one what we're going to do here is a padding and why this padding is same here I do not know another one is the item radius so far I've noticed that this will work with certain dots that will be spread all over the place but I'm going to put on zero and later on I'm going to show you that one so here we're using certain values 
and this must be a function or at least we won't use a function here but i assume if you, you you're familiar with the box plot you probably know the terms here i'm going to use the terms here so that will help you but first i need to make a function and this function will basically look through the items here so i'm going to say a function and this function will be called a random value i just multiply these values here so i'm going to say a count comma min comma max and these values are basically a constant of delta which is the difference between max minus min all right that makes sense of course this is a very familiar item so then what I want to do here, I want to return an array dot from this here will be a length column count. Then we're going to map array these values here. Then here I'm going to push in a random math dot random value. Later on we're going to indicate these values above. So don't worry about this. So these are just the numbers which will be uh, calculated. In this random, you're going to say you multiply by delta, delta plus minimum value. Once we did this, we have here the function up and running. So make sure we have everything correct. We have this one here, that should be all right. Here I need to do another map. All right. Make sure you have this here. So we map through these items here. So the length will be counted here. I guess here you're going to calculate seven items. We'll map through them and give a random value. All right. So now we have to work on this one here because this here, of course, doesn't work right now at all. So we're going to say here in this data, we're going to put in here a curly braces, or sorry, in bracket, because it's an array. But this is a function that will trigger this function here with these three numbers. And then it will loop through this. But then it says the random values, which is our function, are going to put in seven items here. Or oh, sorry, not even seven, eight. So you're going to say 100, 0, and 100. All right. So what is that? It's basically counting in a minimum and the max value. So this most likely is our minimum whisker. Or maybe the second one will be. So we'll see about that. Anyway, the next one I'm going to put in here, which is the 20. And the 20 here, this is the lower quartile. And once we have that one, we have another one, which is the random. And I'm not sure, by the way, of these numbers. I, I'm, and based on my research, this is what I could figure out, but I'm not sure. I might be 100% wrong. So make sure you check as well, but there's right now no documentation. That's why I have a hard time to figure it out. But I just put in this and then you can check if this is correct or not. Because I'm I am not really deep into this now much. I don't understand these. This is most likely a scientific or social study. And this here probably will be our medium. And then we have another one here. This is the random value, which is again random value. Random value, sorry. And this one will be 100, comma, 60, comma, 100. And this here might be, not sure, interquartile range or the IQR. So then we have another one, which would eventually be not only the medium, but this is the mean value. So random values here will be 40 comma 50 by 100 and this would be our this might be our mean then have another one which would be the random values and this will be 100 comma 60 comma 120 and this would be our upper quartile finally here random values or am i correct Oh, we have seven items. I thought it was eight, but it's seven. Sorry about that. So then here, we have the following. 100, 80, 100, which is the max whisker. So if I save this and put a comma here, do it again, refresh. All right, so it's loading now. And let's see, is it giving us an error or what is going on? All right, unexpected token on 58. 
58 here. All right, fair enough. We have to remove this. Save that. Refresh. There we are. So now we get these numbers here. You can see here the numbers. The minimum would be the bottom here. Then we have the 25% for quartile, basically, and the 75 this here in the center is what we call our IQR. If that would be this number, I cannot say, to be honest. So I don't know. The only thing here, and then you can see here we have the mean. And the mean is, uh, let's see here, the mean should be the dot in the center. Do you see that dot there? You might see it. And the median would be this line here, which you can see one is 43 and the other one is 44. So that means that they're just slightly next to each other. If I would change this color or this to 10, you will see what's happening if I save that. Refresh, we get all of these items here. So these might be the data that we found or something like that, that it will get no idea at all, to be honest. Anyway, the max you can see here. And then we have the quartile here at 82.22. And that's basically it. So this is the whisker max, whisker bottom. And then we have here these values. This would be the quartile. That's the quartile, the lower quartile. And here's the upper quartile by, uh, value and then you have the 75 and 25 75 from that here in the center would help us to calculate the medium and the mean so this is basically how you do it make sure you always check for this specific developer s gretzel very important so this is basically we're going to this but maybe and i guess this is probably very related to connecting it with csv files where you have all this data in there because i i assume this is like somewhere scientific you have somewhere a csv file so if you will you like to know even how to connect it with csv file i would highly recommend you to check out this specific video here how to update a chart with the csv file in chart.js that explains you how to combine data from a csv put it into a chart and then even update it based on buttons and that might be very useful with this as well